everyone. Welcome to the Proverbs Path. I'm glad you're here with me today. Uh, I'm going to dive right in. Uh, as I read through Proverbs 11, I noticed that there were five themes uh, in this chapter. Two weeks ago, we looked at Proverbs 11, 3 and 5 and what it has to say about honesty. I'm not sure if I'll go through the rest of the themes that I found in this chapter, but one of the themes I found connects to Jesus in a way. And as Christmas Eve is tomorrow, I thought we would look at that connection today. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for bringing us to this place and for the life that you have available to us. We thank you for the great gift of Jesus and all that that gift brings us. We thank you that that gift brings us a connection to you and a connection to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. God, as we go through our days when our lives are difficult and tiring, may we remember this great gift that you have given us and the life that it brings us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I would like to start off by reading our main verse for today, which is Proverbs eleven nineteen, And that says, Godly people find life. Evil people find death. So when you think about life, what images or thoughts come to mind? For me, I think about this life I'm living right now. I also think about flowers and green trees and animals. And that's pretty much what this word for life in this verse means. The Hebrew word for life in this verse means living, alive, green, such as, as in vegetables or vegetation means flowing, fresh, as in water. It's lively, active, and reviving. It paints this beautiful picture of what happens when you follow God's ways. So think about the last time that you felt alive. Was it when you were off on some adventure? Or was it while you were at your favorite artist's concert? Was it spending time with family and friends? Or was it possibly when you volunteered or served someone else? How did you feel after these experiences? I know for me, when I feel alive, I feel full. Full of joy, full of purpose, full of strength and confidence, full of the presence of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. This is the kind of life we find when we follow God's ways. But as followers of Jesus, there is something a little extra for us. In John 5, 24, Jesus says, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. So this proverb is not specifically talking about eternal life, but how we attain life and eternal life is the same as what's mentioned here in Proverbs eleven nineteen. We believe and we follow the words and ways of God. There is another verse in Proverbs 11 that describes the kind of life we can have when we are godly people. Proverbs 11:21 says, "Evil people will surely be punished, but the children of the godly will go free." In verse 21, the phrase children of the godly is quite literal. The Hebrew word here does mean offspring but it also means a person of moral quality or a practitioner of righteousness. I love that phrase, practitioner of righteousness. And I think that this phrase kind of sums up what Proverbs is all about. The authors of Proverbs are encouraging us to be children of God, and we can do that by following God's ways, by being practitioners of righteousness. So there are also references to being children of God in the New Testament. John 1, 12, John 1, 12 tells us, But to all who believed in him and accepted him, and him here meaning Jesus, he gave the right to become children of God. 
So the Greek word for children here does mean offspring as well, but it's a bit more metaphorical and relational. There are a lot of interesting definitions for this word here in the Greek. Um, and I think that it helps us to understand what it means to be righteous and what it means to follow God's ways. Being a child of God can mean all those who are led by the Spirit of God and thus closely related to him, related to God. As we are in Proverbs, there is also an opposite definition of, the, of this word child of God or children, excuse me, children here as well. So that opposite phrase, definition, is that there are children of the devil. And they are those who in thought and actions are prompted by the devil and so reflect his character. So let's make sure that we are prompted by the Holy Spirit and reflect God's character. Let's build our relationship with God so that we can be closely related to him. And in doing that, we will experience what Proverbs 11.21 is talking about. Being children of God, practitioners of righteousness, brings about freedom and a promised reward. In Proverbs 11.21, it says that practicing righteousness, practicing God's ways, brings about freedom. It's similar for as well for us as Christians today. As we follow in God's ways and accept the great gift of Jesus' sacrifice, we too experience freedom. Jesus, speaking in John 8, 36, says, So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. So there's also this beautiful prophecy about Jesus in Isaiah 61 that talks about the kind of freedom and life Jesus offers. Isaiah 61, 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Children of God, following God's path has a life of freedom, a life of God's good news, a life of healing of broken hearts. This is the life we are promised. Life, abundant life. Before we pray, I want to show you what Proverbs 11 um, tells us about the fruits produced from bringing a practitioner of righteousness. Proverbs 11:30, part A says, the fruit of the righteousness is a tree of life. Following God's ways, looking to him as our example of the right way to handle situations we encounter in this life produces a tree of life one that is alive, green, fresh, active, and reviving. This reminds me of the tree of life in Revelation. Revelation 22, one through two says, then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop every month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. The tree of life, the gift of life from Jesus is healing to us, but it also heals others as well. So when we talk about the gift of Jesus, this is one of the many gifts of Jesus, life, a abundant life as he promises in John 10.10. 10. Life may not have seemed so abundant this year, but I encourage you, keep following God. Keep following the examples of Jesus. Be a practitioner of righteousness. Keep building your relationship with our Father. Accept the great gift of Jesus and you will experience this life, fresh, green, alive, and reviving. And that life will produce the tree of life, one that produces fruit and healing, not just for you, but for 
those that you meet as well. So are you feeling like your life isn't so fresh or green, alive or reviving? Do you need help building your relationship with God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit? Do you feel like your life is lacking in some way? If you answered yes to any of these questions, know that we understand and that is okay. And that's why we want to pray for you. So if you did answer yes to any of these questions, or if anything else I mentioned resonates with you, I invite you to write amen in the comments and we will pray for you. Otherwise, you may write your short prayer request or praise report in the comments, and we will also pray for you. As always, if you are uncomfortable writing amen or your prayer request or praise report in the comments, you are welcome to email me at Janet at RiverHeightsVineyard.org, and I will happily pray for you. So let's finish off with some prayer. Finish off with some prayer. Dear God, we thank you again for this life, this life that has been hard, this life that has been abundant. And God, when we are in the hard moments of life, may we be reminded of the life that you have to offer us and the great gift of Jesus that connects us to you connects us to your ways, to your wisdom, to your guidance, to your love, to your presence. Just your presence alone is an amazing gift. And so we thank you for those gifts, God, today and all days. God, may we be filled, filled with your strength and courage to keep following you in your ways, to keep seeking you, to keep seeking Jesus, to keep seeking the Holy Spirit, and to be open to all that you have to offer us. And may that strength and courage and openness lead us on your right paths. And may we find that our work, that our work in connecting to you produces this beautiful tree of life. And may we rejoice in that and live this life, abundant life that you have given us. We thank you over and over again, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining me. I, I pray <laughs> that that this was an encouragement because I know how hard life has been, especially this year. I just pray you know that you have life, <laughs> good, abundant, fresh life in God and Jesus. And they love you so much. <laughs> uh, take this with you as you celebrate Christmas. Merry Christmas! I'm so happy to say that with to you guys. I hope you have a wonderful holiday, a wonderful celebration, whatever it may look like this year. I hope to see you guys at our uh, at our drive-in service tomorrow. It is definitely going to be an experience, and I I think it'll fill you with life. Love you all. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>